Hey there everyone and welcome back to The Disconnected. My name is Ryan and as you can probably tell tonight we are going to be doing another label centric video and tonight that is going to be on Severin Films. So get strapped in because this is going to be a pretty wild ride. So to get the most basic of information out of the way, they were formed in 2006 under David Gregory, Carl Daft, and John Cregan. David Gregory had originally been working for Blue Underground in the United Kingdom, working on special features, uh, interviews, featurettes, things like that, and wanted to start producing his own items. If you've ever wondered, the label got their name Severin from the novel Venus in Furs. And now the most common names that you'll associate with the label itself, the founder and current leader of the pack, as they would say, is David Gregory. You'll see him associated with everything from some of the documentaries to being involved in the podcast that they've put out to being uh, directing, uh, you know, part of the Theater Bazaar and some other aspects of their PR. His name is pretty much synonymous with the company, which is a great thing. He's a great guy. Another common name to see with the label nowadays is Andrew Furtado. He is active in a lot of the Facebook groups surrounding boutique collecting. He's also on the podcast and he is currently the post-production supervisor and handles a lot of the uh, Blu-ray production on that aspect. The other name that you'll recognize from the podcast is Zach Carter. He does a lot of QC and edits featurettes that the label themselves make. And the last name that you'll probably recognize from seeing online is Jason Duran. I, I believe that's how you say the last name. He is currently the director of merchandising and e-commerce, and he will come up a little later in the video. So some of the more basic parts of ordering from Severin site directly is that they offer free shipping in the U.S. for anything over $80. They also offer free shipping to Canadians for $125 and all international orders over $150. Their website has changed a lot through the years. There's been two major iterations. The latest one is better than it used to be, but it is still pretty clunky in my opinion. Um, as you can see here, it is not super user friendly. Uh, there is not a lot of freedom in how you can view their items uh, grouped together. You're essentially forced to view uh, either Blu-rays altogether, DVDs altogether, or merch altogether but then it also mixes everything up. So if you're just looking for that one type of item, it does not sort in a way that is logical to me at least. Um, I would like to see a third revamp of their website and maybe come back as something uh, more akin to some of the other major boutique uh, websites. I believe they could do a lot better here. Another interesting aspect of Severin when it comes to their website is that they are no longer offering cancellations on pre-ordered items. So if you pre-order a single release all the way up to a bundle through them and for some reason you want to cancel it, they simply state you cannot. You have to keep any orders that you have open. Uh, that's, that's it. Um, They've also stated alongside that that if you process a PayPal claim against them, you will be banned from ordering from their site. Now, I do understand the logic behind that, especially when we have, unfortunately in this scene, a lot of whiny collectors, but it's not something that uh, I, I could see enforcing if I owned a site like this. Perhaps offer a you know two-strike policy rather than just the first one. I, I don't really understand that customer service aspect there. That policy does come across as sort of anti-consumer, which you're selling products to a consumer, I would, I would expect them to do something that would actually treat people with respect as they're buying from them. All that being said, I love Severin. As you can see, I have bought from Severin countless times. They are somebody that I recommend on a regular basis. I love many of their releases and I would like to get into those with you now. So this is the first type of release. This is the old style. You'll see the Blu-ray and DVD combo. Uh, listed across the top there. Just a regular blue case. Open it up. Uh, I actually just watched this last night. So um, got that disc missing. My Blu-ray disc is in my player. Um, not a whole lot going on here. Not much to set it apart. It's got the Severn logo on the bottom there and the spine and the back, but it's pretty much just a standard type of release. The next one is when they started to get a little fancier and something like this, which was a classic film style release. This came with a Severin slipcover when this was released. This has uh, embossing on the slipcover. This was actually a very nice release, which you would expect for something as classic as the Changeling. 
Um, the big thing that they started to change around this time is that they all came in black cases. This is this is the Big Severn claim to fame, is that all of their releases come in these really nice black cases. They sell them on their site. This is something that is fantastic when you get them all uh, sat together on the shelf. The ones that have slip covers and don't, they all have these black cases. They are very nice. Uh, one thing that sets a lot of the Severn releases apart is on their limited editions, they have uh, this. This is one of them that does have this. This has a compact disc, a CD of the soundtrack of the movie. Um, most of the time it is only in the limited edition of the film, and then they also have a standard edition later that um, does not include the CD. But the limited editions that do are very nice. Uh, they work great. They sound great. They are really nice to uh, have for you at home. So that was their old Blu-ray style, their new Blu-ray style, and now they are getting into the 4K market. So this is a very recent release. You'll see across the top here, full 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray. This is Perdita Durango from Severin, still in the uh, black case, and this is a regular 4K uh, case. You'll see this is just a pretty standard slipcover, and this release looks like that on the inside. Uh, one thing about um, the Severn releases, this does not have reversible artwork. Would be sort of nice if they did, even if it was the same artwork on this, if somebody would rather have this instead of the classic art. Uh, either way, they are very nice. Nothing against that. And the next type of release from Severn that sets them apart from the competitors in a pretty fun way, in my opinion, is they have these novelty slipcovers on some of their releases. So this is... Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and Terminator 2, but obviously these are not those actual movies. So this one is Night Killer. You'll see it's the same art on there um, with the actual title. This is marketed, or sorry, this was marketed in other countries as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, even though they're not actually related. They did that to cash in on the franchise. And then this one is not Terminator 2. This was Shocking Dark, and it was marketed as Terminator 2 elsewhere. Again, just to, to cash in on that money so that they could try to, you know, leech off of the name. It's like uh, Zombie 2 in the UK and elsewhere when it was marketed under that name. They are super nice, the slipcovers for those. They also had uh, Jaws 5 for Cruel Jaws. They are uh, something that I sincerely hope they keep on doing. There, there are a few more of those that if they got the rights to, they could release with that special slipcover, and I, I really like the way they do that, and as far as I'm aware, there's no licensing issues because it's not the actual movie title that they're printing it with, it's just an art. Another note on Severn slipcovers is a lot of the times the slipcovers are limited to their website only. In fact, I believe all of them are limited to their website only, but one of the main reasons is a lot of them are uncensored. So this is one, I will precariously place my fingers there, this is eaten alive, and the actual slipcover does have some nudity on it, so a place like Amazon would not sell this, but the um, art on the inside is something that they can sell like this. Because America is fucked up because nudity is way wrong, but violence is totally fine. Um, this is a great release. This is Umberto Lenzi's Eaten Alive. It is, as you can see there, and the... Artwork on this one is reversible, but this is listed under, let me see if I can <laughs> kind of place my fingers there, listed under Doom to Die, another name there as well. Something fun Severin did very recently is they put out something called the Severin Kids Line. This is, I believe they're, they're, they've had two releases of Severin Kids. This was the first one, this is the Peanut Butter Solution. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be able to be made out on the back there, but they have a brand new logo for Severin Kids. This is something that is geared towards a younger audience, does not have all the blood and gore of one of their more common releases, but it is something that you probably wouldn't want to show like a six-year-old. Just uh, a, a very cool line for, I mean, mostly for me, like this is one that I saw when I was quite young, I, I believe 10 or 11 and it's, it's something that I can see showing my kids soon. So I, I love that they branched out to something like this. Uh, the next type is the old type of box sets from Severn. So once again, precariously placing my finger here, this is their box set for all the colors of the dark. 
and also includes all the colors of Giallo. This is a two disc box set. Now the big thing with this one that makes it the old style is this is a very flimsy type of cardboard. It is not something that you can knock and have a hard box like these new ones. These are much higher quality in my opinion and from what I hear they are going to be sticking to those uh, hard boxes a lot more frequently than these soft boxes. That should be something that's more of a permanent change. And speaking of these hard boxes, this is, excuse me, sir, hold still. This is something that they have really been focusing on recently is these box sets. So uh, in 2020, we got the Al Adamson Masterpiece Collection. Then in 2021, we just got the Dungeon of Andy Milligan. And these are essentially comprehensive box sets. So for Al Adamson, I believe it is everything that he ever recorded. Uh, for Milligan, this is everything that has survived. There are some other movies that he did, but there are no surviving elements for those. Uh, this is a really good set. This is the Lindsey Baker set. All of their uh, collaborations all together in this hard box with the top that comes off. Uh, one of my favorite things that Severn does is they release these box sets and a lot of times they put out corresponding t-shirts. So like they put out the movie Enigma and they put out this t-shirt. Another really great one they did is the same design from the back of the box set. They put on a bright yellow t-shirt and it's honestly, it's one of the nicest shirts Severn has put out. I've got quite a few from them and I believe that one's my favorite. I love the design on that one. And uh, most of their shirts like this one has gone through a company called Paul Bearer Press. They are very high quality shirts. They fit very well. They are nice. I would suggest picking some of those up. So some of the other types of films that Seven has put out, they put out some old 80 sex comedies. This is Screwballs. They also put out the sequel to this. Uh, they, unfortunately, this is out of print and they have not done something like this for a long time, though they have let it be known that they are releasing Overboard soon. Uh, another classic that they've put out is Turkey Shoot and some other Ozploitation heavy movies. They also did BMX Bandits with Nicole Kidman. Kidman. And uh, there are some other classics they've put out. Um, we're not necessarily gonna talk about some of those other classics, but uh, they also have a good partnership with Lucio Fulci movies. They have sold quite a few of his and uh, Demonia is a really nice one and something that I would suggest everybody pick up. The slip art is there. This is the standard art. I love the way they've made these films look. The restorations look great and they, they are easy purchases, especially during a sale. Another partnership that Severn has seemed to make is they have released quite a few films from Jess Franco. This is their slip box for She Killed in Ecstasy. They also have one very similar to this for Vampiros Lesbos. And the actual box on the inside is not black. It's, a, it's an older style release, but this is beautiful art. It, they, you can tell they put a lot of love into these two releases from uh, Jess Franco. And this one is one that does have a CD soundtrack on the inside. It is very nice. All right, and then a couple more common collaborators that they've had is they've put out a couple of Buddy Giovinazzo's movies. This was limited to only 2,000 upon release. This came out uh, during one of their sales and this sold out during that weekend as far as I'm aware. This is a old copy. I had seen this prior so I've not opened this version but it came with a book and quite a few other pieces of the film, the actual film for this movie. Uh, very nicely done and the back is autographed. They also did No Way Home from him. And then an unfortunate collaboration. Uh, they have released quite a lot to do with Richard Stanley. So they had Richard Stanley read out the, uh, the Color Out of Space and put this out on cassette tape. There is also a download card in here. It is for the HP Lovecraft short story. Unfortunately, Richard Stanley has been discovered to be a wife beater amongst other things. Uh, so it appears that they're going to be distancing themselves from his name quite a bit, which frankly, that's probably a great thing for the company. So something that we absolutely have to bring up is that Severin Films has a sub-label called Intervision Pictures. So this is a pair of releases from Intervision. This is Feed the Light, uh, based on an HP Lovecraft movie. And this is a double feature of Dreamstalker and Death by Love. They have a lot of their titles on DVD. They have a few on Blu-ray. Um, they are lesser known titles, but they nonetheless are great. A lot of them are super fun. Uh, I would actually suggest, especially in the upcoming sales, everybody start with some of the Intervision titles. 
Some of these, they are literally on sale for five and six dollars when it comes to their big 50% uh, off sales. Um, after you start getting excited over the big bundles that they're doing, look at Intervision. You might be able to save a ton of money there and get a lot of titles that you may not have been uh, expecting. So as you can see here, Severin does a lot with merchandise. You know, I don't ever see Scream Factory putting out a plush of a man eating his own insides, for example. Um, but that's amazing. I love that I have this. Uh, the fact that they have a Jess Franco tree topper and he's literally holding a lit cigarette. It's, it's perfect. It's just absolutely everything I want from a company like this. Um, one of the other things that I've got from them is a shot glass. I mean, it's these are the type of movies that you need to shop for sometimes. It, it's perfect. Uh, in my other video, I highlighted this one, but this marquee magnet from the um, Dungeon of Andy Milligan set that I got is, is beautiful and super well made. And then things like, I mean, a, a Cool Jaws branded squirt gun. That's fantastic. And then from the Al Adamson set, they had a handful of goodies. They had a plane ticket. They had a, a vinyl record that came with it. This is the uh the fangs that you could get and i mean they they've they've sold seven branded pasties they do amazing stickers like this one that i should hide that portion of i mean it, it does not get a whole lot better than this and as you can see from some of these other pictures they've done things like beach balls the bouncing ball from the changeling they've done christmas ornaments they've done these incredible pins that you can see here these are the Severn Films Hall of Fame, and they have everybody from Lucio Fulci to Lena Romay and Al Adamson. These are incredibly high quality. I love these. I really hope that they keep putting these out. The art on these are amazing, and they are something that I love to be able to display next to these movies. They look fantastic. But there's all these other goodies that just go throughout my movie room that I, I'm so glad to be able to feature here, and it sets everything apart. It is something... That is just amazing to see. I, I love that they're here. I love that they make these bundles and that you can buy them in a way that sets uh, you know, a specific movie apart, like the Horror of Party Beach <laughs> beach ball that you can buy with the movie. Um, you can have the bouncing ball from The Changeling. While you're watching The Changeling, you can hold it. it. It is something that makes that movie that much more tangible to you, and they're fantastic. And I mean, you know, a, a Nosferatu in Venice floating pen. There's so much that they've done that is just great. I hope they continue to do these. So unfortunately, not everything with Severn has been sunshine and roses, as they would say. There are a couple things that have been uh, a miss. Um, first off, they have two big sales every single year. They have their Black Friday sale, which of course is the weekend after Thanksgiving, starting that Thursday night usually ending on Sunday night. Um, I believe they've gone through Monday once or twice. Uh, the other big one, it was halfway to Black Friday around the end of May. Uh, in 2020, they did it at the end of June so that they weren't competitive with Vinegar Syndrome. And I foresee that continuing. They will probably be on that same path again. Um, unfortunately, they do not have a great reputation when it comes to these sales. Uh, they have had quite a few times where their website simply gave up when people came to shop. Um, you would think that with these boutique uh, distributors, they would put enough bandwidth in place so that they could have thousands of people come and buy stuff from them. And unfortunately, Severin has... The sale in June of 2020 was so bad that they took the entire website down and had to have people submit orders through email. Um, this process, this process worked, but it was not consumer friendly. They did not get uh, confirmation emails to people in time. They were unable to handle everything in a way that seemed to uh, be in place for people to want to come back. I mean, not to, to mince words there necessarily, but it's not a system that is set up to be buyer friendly, which if you're wanting to make money, you probably should have that in place. Um, they, they are saying that their website is back up and ready to go uh, a better clip next time. Unfortunately, the Black Friday sale in November was not a great marker for that because they did not have a slate of titles that a lot of people were excited for. Uh, if you're going to release a big title in November, you don't make it Richard Stanley reading The Color Out of Space. I mean, I'm glad I own it, but it's not something that you should put an entire bundle together for and mark it as your big Black Friday sale. It's It was something that a lot of people were let down by 
and I foresee them doing a lot better for the next two sales uh, for 2021. Um, just my opinion, I don't think Severn has had a better run of titles than they've had in the last six or seven months. Their bundles have been amazing, their box sets have been incredible. The titles they're announcing are way up my alley with stuff coming out like Siege and the uh, attack, uh, When Animals Attack bundle, it looks fantastic. Even though Grizzly has been put out before, it, it is something that I am certainly looking forward to from Severin. So like I said, they do have two big sales throughout the year. Um, unfortunately, these sales used to be better. Uh, we saw the last sale, they had slightly raised the prices. So something that in the previous sale had been maybe 11 or $12 was now up around the $14, $15 range. Uh, it's not a huge difference, but if you're gonna buy 10 titles, that $3 difference is suddenly 30 bucks and you could have bought maybe, you know, two other movies. So it, it was a change that people noticed and a lot of people are not happy with them for uh, seemingly raising the prices out of nowhere. I get it, stuff is more expensive, especially in the COVID era. A lot of things have changed. Uh, shipping prices have gone up tremendously. There's not a whole lot we can do, but they could have probably been a little more transparent about it. Um, in the meantime, we just deal with it. It is something that if you want to buy from them, you do. If you don't, then you don't. So not being able to handle sales traffic during a sale is one thing. Unfortunately, Severin has a, had a couple of scandals, we'll say. One of them is that with these sales, they have announced that their website was hacked. Now, I don't want to call them liars necessarily, but most people on the internet were not born yesterday, and it appears to us that it was just the fact that they were overloaded with traffic. And to say that your website was hacked, I'm sorry, but who do they think is gonna be out there attacking Severn Films, trying to get them off the internet. Um, there's no, you know, rogue pirate boutique distributing label that is out there to take them down so that they make zero sales. People want your titles. I mean, if you are transparent and telling everybody we are overloaded with traffic, they're gonna respond a lot better than if you say, sorry guys, we were hacked, uh, we don't know what happened. We'll get the website back up in a day or two, but in the meantime, email us your, your choices. I mean, Come on, let, let's be a little more honest than that. I, I get not being able to handle it if you are you know, not funneling a lot of money into your website, but you probably should be. I mean, the amount of money that they've lost in some of these sales taking their site offline would have paid for a better website or a better host service at least. And then there is the other major scandal from the last year and a half. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you would hear about the employee Jason Duran again, and now it's time to discuss his interaction. So during Black Friday 2020, when uh, they raised prices, Jason Duran had this exact back and forth with somebody from his personal account on Facebook. So like I said, he is the, he is the director of e-commerce and merchandising. He does all of the website stuff basically, so he is behind everything wrong that has happened on the website. Uh, I'm not saying he caused it necessarily, but he's in charge of them selling things online. So this seems to fall in his purview. So his exact interaction with somebody else on Facebook from his personal account, he's not speaking on behalf of the company. I will give him that on this. This is from his personal account. So we'll talk more on that in a second. But he had said, LOL at some of these crybabies, the site never crashed and has been purring like a kitten from the get-go. Quit being a fucking moron and clear your cash. Now, I'm sorry, but this is ridiculous. So, I don't ever have to clear my cash to purchase anything from any other website. This was a Severin specific thing, seemingly from what he's claiming. We couldn't get your website to load, it just wasn't working, dude. You, you, you should not be buying or you should not be telling people trying to purchase from your website to quit being a crybaby and being fucking morons. That's not how this works. Uh, somebody responded back and said, I was also wondering how long it would take for someone to whine about the sale price change. Didn't take long. And then he responded. This is Jason responding here. He said, yep, sorry fuckers. Shouldn't have kicked us when we were down this past summer. Now you pay more. No, you don't respond like that. You do not imply 
which he, again he is not speaking on behalf of the company this is from his personal account you do not imply that you are raising prices because people complained about your website being down that is not why this happened tell everybody that is that it's from rising costs do not call people buying from you fucking morons don't tell them that they're kicking you while you're down and you're punishing them by raising prices. That's not how this works. This is Blu-rays, not life and death. So somebody that I'm actually kind of friends with online, uh, he responded on one of these other threads, I'm kind of pissed that it didn't crash. What am I supposed to bitch about now? And then Jason responded here. He said, just make shit up. That's what other fans do. I mean, nobody's making stuff up. People were streaming live when your site wasn't working. I was one of the people trying to get on your website to look and it was not working. I did not need to clear my cache, but my browser would not take me to your website when it was supposed to be up. There was a lot that we can still complain about, Jason. Uh, another, you know, a couple things that he said during this time, uh, a tweet he sent out, I believe, said, like, I've spent the last two weeks in bed slowly dying, but still managed to set everything up better than ever before. Fuck these people. You've mentioned before that you're working for Severin, and now you're saying, fuck these people that are literally paying your income. This is not okay. Another thing he said, though, honestly, though, if this post is all it takes to drive people away, then we don't need them. I mean, there's so much to unpack there. This is just all around terrible customer service. It is not something he should have said. Uh, beyond all that, um, the company did get him to stop posting publicly. Um, sounds like it was warranted to me, but that's where we are. So, uh, all that being said, I still purchase from Severin. I still will purchase from Severin. I do think this was less of a big deal than people made it out to be. However, it was wrong. And in today's day and age, especially, you don't talk like this about customers, especially ones that are literally paying your income. This is something I don't understand. It's not hard to just do what you're supposed to do. Sit there and allow people to give you money. And if the biggest thing is that your website can't stay up, pay a little more money into a better hosting service so that you can handle the bandwidth. Then we won't have to go through this at least twice a year. Everything could have been better for Severin if their website had stayed up in June of 2020. They would not have to be hand going through receipts and sending stuff through email for weeks. Then they took more than a month to get everything shipped out. They, they had a drastically no, lower number of orders in the month of June than they expected, and they still took months to ship everything out. It was crazy. That, uh, that sale was the very last weekend of June, and I don't believe I got my stuff until the middle to late part of August of 2020. It was crazy the amount of time they spent shipping those items. Um, again, not faulting them for all of this, but there are some things that they could allocate better resources to and handle it so much better as a company. There are others out there that are killing it, and you're friends with a lot of them. You interact with them. Ask them for some pointers, Severin. Reach out to your bros over there that are running other boutique labels. Tell them, we want to see traffic as high as yours. What can we do to make this better for our consumers? And finally, I wanted to give some recommendations for some movies to look for in the upcoming sales. So first of all, I have what might be my favorite Severn film. That is The Boys Next Door. This one is crazy, randomly violent. Uh, young Charlie Sheen, it's fantastic. Pick it up, watch it, you'll love it. Another one that's dark and doesn't get enough love is Skinner with Ted Raimi and Tracy Lords. And of course, Ricky Lake is in that one too. This one I'd seen before Severin released it. I need to watch this 4K, but this is the other 4K they just recently put out from Alex de Iglesia. This is Day of the Beast. Great movie, lots of funny parts, but overall, just really well done movie. Then a couple Severin classics. Uh, this is <laughs> Burial Ground. I had seen this before, that's why it's still sealed. Um, a couple of these are for that reason, but um, not a lot you can say from that uh, movie without... <laughs> It's an interesting one. Give it a buy, give it a watch. It'll probably be very cheap in each of the, the sales that Severn has. Um, another one that's a classic for them is The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. I think this limited edition is sold out. Um, this is a, a very, very nice release from them. This is one of their better releases. 
and honestly one of their better movies, hence me trying to highlight it. So I'm glad they put that out. Uh, one that really does not get enough love that is just very odd. That's a good word for it. Um, St. Bernard. I, I love this movie. But this is one of those movies I think I hated it while watching it. And then in about the last 10 minutes, I just finally had everything click and love this movie. And I've watched it again since I watched it the first time. Um, yes, I, I think you should watch this one. Another one that will probably be very, very inexpensive during their sales. Another thing Severn does great is documentaries. So this is their uh, Video Nasties, The Definitive Guide 1 and 2. Um, so they did a lot of documentaries so far. They uh, did the real life and ghastly death of Al Adamson. They have that sexploitation that they put out. They've also been advertising a folk horror documentary that they've made. I believe it just showed at South by Southwest. Really looking forward to that one coming out. I'm sure there's going to be parts on The Wicker Man, Midsummer, a lot of those other types of uh, movies. I'm willing to bet The Witch is going to be on there. Um, yes, they, they do a lot of great work on their documentaries. And that's pretty much it. Um, there is a lot of great movies in their catalog. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer and give an opinion on any of them. So I will say about Severn's releases, some of them have not looked as good as they could. Um, supposedly they get some of the encoding on their discs wrong sometimes, then they might end up looking a little compressed or less uh, lower quality than they should. I, I can put it that way. Some of the same movies that they've put out, other companies have distributed generally overseas, of course, um, due to licensing issues. And some of them are supposedly way better. Like uh, 88 Films also put out The Devil's Honey. This is a Lucio Fulci film that Severin is known for putting out. This is one of their big titles. And supposedly this version is quite a bit better, uh, much more high quality. However, I would not be surprised if Severin released this one on 4K soon. Um, like they are for Santa Sangre. That's another one of their big titles that they are putting out on 4K. Um, so pay attention. Go to a site like DVDCompare.com or uh, DVD Beaver. There's a few others like Capsaholic that will explain um, the differences in releases. Uh, you can also look on Blue-Ray.com and they will show you some reviews and compare those releases so you can make a choice which one that you want to purchase. Um, a lot of times though, those are going to be region locked. So if you're not region free, pay attention to that and you're gonna to have to look on that blu-ray.com site um, a lot of people have tested those releases and they'll know if they're actually locked or not so that's it that's all i got on Severn films uh my final verdict i love the company i will continue to support the company i'm friends with people that work at the company so my final verdict on Severn films i love the company i will continue to support the company I buy their releases. I suggest other people buy their releases. I will collect their stuff. Um, that being said, make your own choice. You can be a savvy consumer, do what you need to do. Um, I you know, have spoken to people from the company and it appears there are good things coming. Uh, they have listened to some uh, people giving some feedback and it appears they're gonna be doing better as a company moving forward. I'd like to believe that's the case. Um, that's all I got though. So uh, if you got any questions on any individual titles, let me know in the comments. Send me a message, whatever you'd like. You know, I'm here, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I have a new Twitter now, so I am available at all of those. All the links are down below. Um, if you like this, give it a like, please share, um, subscribe. I've got some more coming out. Let me know if you'd like to see anything else coming soon. I, I am planning on doing another label video here in the next few weeks. Um, I also had somebody request to see my entire Scream Factory collection after I did the Scream Factory lineup, and I have every single release that Scream Factory has ever put out. So I am planning on sharing all of those soon. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know. Like I said, like, subscribe, uh, hit that bell for notifications down below. From one collector to all of you, have a good night. The label name got there.